Hello, David Snowpack here from Snowpack Games, and welcome to another devlog for Voxel Architect, a VR voxel builder game that I'm creating in the Godot game engine. In this episode, we'll ironically be looking at the non-VR version of this VR game and talk about how you guys were right and I was wrong and how your insistence has changed the game for the better. So last time, I mentioned that I want this game to have online multiplayer. Online multiplayer games with Godot is kind of my thing, and I just think multiplayer experiences in VR are so compelling. My father lives in another city. We don't get to see each other very often in person, but we meet up in VR to play mini golf almost every week. And it feels so much more like we're spending time together than a phone call or a video call would. Anyway, I can't wear two VR headsets at the same time, so having a non-VR version of the game is essential to start working on multiplayer. And I would eventually like to release the non-VR version too, since VR is still pretty niche, and I'd like more people to be able to play it. So what do we need for a non-VR version? Well, in VR, you've got this palette attached to your left hand, and that's how you change which tool you're using, which voxel you're placing, and all of that. So we need some kind of desktop version of the palette. And I started working on this terrible looking thing that would replicate all of the features of the palette, but with normal flat 2D controls. The idea, of course, was to make it look much nicer eventually. But as I was working on this on stream, everyone in chat was saying over and over again, why don't you just put the VR palette on the screen rather than building this whole new 2D UI? And the reason was that I was worried that it would look obviously ported over from VR. And as I know from releasing Retro Tank Party on Steam, PC gamers can be kind of mean. You know, comments like, this is a low effort port from mobile. This doesn't feel like a real PC game. Well, I was worried about being accused of a low effort port from VR, but everyone kept insisting that it would work, that it would be like a diegetic UI, that it would save me a lot of time and effort in needing to build and maintain two separate UIs. And anyway, if people tried it and they did end up hating it, I could always rebuild it later as a 2D UI. Well, they convinced me, and halfway through the stream, we started seeing what it would look like. We had to work through a whole bunch of weird rendering issues. This just looks wrong. <laughs> and why is the color on the, the color button like so strange? Okay, well, that's, that's immediately a little bit better, but still terrible. I don't know if you guys can see that on the stream. That border just looks nasty. I don't know if that's what we want here. <gasps> it's exactly what we want. The blocks button too just looks like garbage. All the textures look like garbage. But ultimately, they were right. You guys were right. It did work and it feels awesome. So here's what it looks like. You walk around with the WASD keys, mouse look, you click to place some voxels, but if you press the back tick tilde key, the palette animates up into view, which I think does help you to embody this first person perspective. Then as you move your mouse over the palette, it subtly rotates towards the mouse, which I really love. It makes it feel way more three dimensional than if it stayed in one place. It could turn out to annoy players. We'll have to see in playtesting and then make some adjustments. Of course, if you click any of the buttons, it works just like it does in VR. Let's put down some purple voxels. And if you press the escape key, it brings up the same save and load menu as we have in VR. So what's up next? Well, there's a couple of bugs to fix, but I want to get it out to playtesters so I can start getting some feedback. If you're interested in playtesting, please come join the Snowpit Games Discord. And as I mentioned earlier, I want to finally get started working on online multiplayer. So please subscribe on YouTube so you don't miss the next episode and check out snowpitgames.com for a link to the Discord and more information about me and my work. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.